Okay, so it is Josephine. Josephine Bintema from Authors Helping Authors. And today I was hoping to talk about um, pantsers versus plotters. So mainly we're gonna talk about plotting out a book, outlining a book, because pantsers really don't do this. There's really not too much to talk about when it comes to pantsing. Um, so what a pantser is, is a, is a person who just, you know, they get the idea, they start writing, and they just kind of wing it. They just keep going, they don't outline usually. They might write a small list of things, but for the most part, they're just kind of going off the top of their head and they will edit later. Um, I kind of view it as a sewing project. So for instance, a pantser will just grab a bunch of different, you know, fabrics, they won't have any particular pattern in mind, and they will cut up their strips and then go sewing and then, you know, at the end they'll basically have a crazy quilt. Meanwhile, plotters are people who are going to, um, they're going to outline, they're going to look at things, they're going to decide where stuff is going, they're going to decide the order of things, and sometimes they like follow a beat sheet, which we'll talk about today, and they will really have it laid out before they start their um, their writing. And some people will do it with more detail, some will do it with less detail, excuse me, just depending how they want to go. So today we're going to talk about outlining and uh, being a plotter. So normally I'm a pants, which means that I wing it. And you can probably tell by my books that I kind of do. But in the romance thing, it, it works. Um, recently, I've started writing a cozy mystery set, and that is much more difficult because I have to get things in order. I have to remember who's done what, who hasn't done what, um, because it's a murder mystery. We're talking about plotting, and we're going to discuss how to create an outline for your book. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Elaine. Um, if anybody else wants to join us, they are more than welcome. We are basically every Thursday night from 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we are authors helping authors, and we're trying to hopefully assist each other in creating different books and stuff. And if you have any questions along the way, you are more than welcome to ask them. They can be on tonight's subject, which is plotting, or they can be on anything else. We're outlining our cozy mystery because I'm writing a cozy mystery. So I thought we'd start by talking about um, outlines and um, beat sheets. So what a beat sheet is, and you can just Google this and find a lot of them, which is very, very helpful. A beat sheet kind of tells you what order of events things are going to happen in and approximately when um, when to drop those events in when you're writing fiction basically it's like a um, there's outlines there's beat sheets um, you're you're kind of laying out an idea of what you want to do before you're doing it uh, so for like example cozy mystery or you can even do this like in in other stories as well, any other fiction or even non-fiction ones. So for like act one, we're gonna present the crime. We're gonna introduce our sleuth. So whoever our detective type person is, we're gonna offer our plausible suspects, introduce crime complications and introduce private life subplot. So there's different, different areas there. Our act two is our initial investigations and air intake interrogations to reveal our clues. Um, this one says you can have a suspect suddenly disappear and raise the stakes. Um, you have a development of a subplot. Act three reveals hidden motives of, of the stakeholders. Uh, unsatisfying solution reached. Return to overlook clue from act one and that will create the resolution of your subplot and confrontation with the perpetrator and then our resolution. So that's a very very basic one. This one kind of has the same sort of idea. So this one I think is very long for page count. I would not make that many pages, but you can choose how, 
how many pages you want. You can kind of subdivide it up from there. So they're saying their word count is eventually going to be, wow, over 100,000 words. I'm not going that far. <laughs> but you have the uh, sorry, your introduction. You have your inciting incident. You have um, the events that are going to force your characters to make a choice. You go in to add a pinch point, which is an event that adds more conflict. Um, you, again, add more conflict as well in there. You have a crisis, um, then you're going to get a climax from there, what that pushes the ch characters to change. You can have a resolution, and there is your particular beat sheet. Um, I have another one over here, which I think is going to be very helpful to my little story. And it shows, it's basically an outline, and I'm, I'm going to incorporate it into my sheet. So you have your little victims, you have a little, um, what happened to them, their time of death, where the body was discovered, who discovered the body, and description of the victim. So this will all be little details which are going to now, I did do a suspects and short description cast of characters already, but those are all things that are going to help me decide how to kind of bring it together. And you always have this information on hand in a separate sheet, like I have an Excel sheet with this all on it, which will, which will help kind of jog the memory of where you want the story to go and how you want it to take place. So here it has like suspect one where the interview takes place, the alibi, the lie, the truth, and it points to. So every, for this particular person, she has every character tell a lie and tell a truth. And so every time they get interviewed, they kind of discover what the lie is, discover what the truth is. And it might not be a big lie. It might be like a white lie, or it might be something totally different. And they also point their finger at somebody else. So their kind of detective goes around in circles and has to figure it out, which is really helpful. Um, and then she states who the killer is, who the main red herring is, so who they suspect all along, but it was never them. And you have little subplots and things like that. Um, so for mine, I have a character list of everybody that I'm going to be putting in my books. I have their description of who they are. I have their history, what they love to do. I have a motive for why they do things. And then I go into different books that I'm going to actually do. And I take those characters over here and I bring their motives over here. I bring a main conflict. So my main conflict is that we found a body. Oops. Um, we say who our dead body is. We also have a secondary conflict. So she's deciding whether or not to sell the Happy, happy Camper Resort. And everybody's, you know, what their part of that is in it. And then the third conflict is his, whether her grandmother was a murderer or not. And then I've got my chain of events going on. So I've kind of out, put a sentence to each scene that I'm going to write. And then I'll have to write stuff into, in between to kind of connect them. And then I have my little extras that are kind of funny things just to remember to mention and to, to put in there so that I know not to forget those things. So just having an outline of where you want to go and what you want to do. And it doesn't have to be, um, and then I have a little, different ideas that I'm going to do throughout the series. But just having an outline, even if it's nonfiction, you can decide, okay, I've, you know, I've written, let's say, you've written maybe, you know, 30 or 50 blogs over the course of a year. And so you have all of these articles. And now you're like, okay, so I have all these articles, how do I want to fit them into a book? And what do I need? What can I cut out? What can I edit and stuff like that? So you can start with an outline saying, okay, what is the book about? What's the main theme? What are its sub themes? Um, you can have like maybe three or four different categories that each of these blogs can, you can slowly um, divide them up and make them fit into. So say one of the blogs is gardening and the next blogs are about, um, uh, reducing your carbon footprint. And the next set of blogs are um, how to, to, you know, bake with more natural ingredients. So you can say, okay, the theme that you can see from the blogs that you're writing is maybe living a more wholesome life. And that's going to be the theme of your book. And you're going to take those three categories, those are your 
your large headings, and then you can create little subheadings underneath there. How to eat, you know, no more uh, wholesome foods is going to, you know, turn into uh, little subcategories of your blog saying, okay, uh, recipes. And the other one might be uh, the science behind it. And the next one might be, um, this is what I found were my results and my story. And so you've got those particular little blogs and then you can take them and put them into those categories and make them more cohesive. And now suddenly you've got an entire book and that can sell and you've got your outline to kind of piece it together, you know, your introduction, your conclusion, and you've got those three categories and you can make it fit. And you can see how an outline can just sort of organize your thoughts in there and organize how you want the final product to go. And I'm not saying that it is, you know, the be all and end all. You can change your outline as you go, as it suits your needs, but it gives you a starting point and a way to organize your thoughts and what you want to do. So normally I'm not an organizer, but I found that this could be very, very helpful. I have a more detailed outline here. This one is by Nina Harrington. And again, I got all of these off of Google. Google is a great place to look for different outlines for things. This one is much more detailed and it gives, well, it's eight pages worth. So it gives a lot of excuse me, ideas of things that you can do to make it more interesting. And they're just general ideas because you have to make those ideas suit what you want and what you need. But you can throw in Google and say, um, maybe like uh, outline for writing uh, a memoir. That, that one was kind of interesting. So there are all sorts of different ones right here. How to write a memorable memoir. And it just gives you kind of ideas of where to start. This is just a general outlining. They're showing your book title, who the author is going to be, what your opening statement is going to be about. So what is, um, what are you going to talk about? Um, in your memoir. So they've provided an example by using the red lettering, but you would obviously put in your own subject there. They show different topics and then they start their discussing of what topics and they have subcategories. And these are just things that you're going to talk about. It doesn't have to be in full sentences. If you want to do part sentences, that's perfectly fine. Or if you want to do full sentences, that's perfectly fine too. And then they have the closure and conclusion, which usually mirrors your uh, introduction or thesis statement. And so it kind of just shows how to go about it and, and where you want to put in your own. Outline for writing a, let's go for self-help book. I love Google. It's my friend. So there are different ideas. And you know, you can use, there's YouTube videos out there. You're gonna find things that you won't necessarily ring true to what you want to do, but you can find some useful stuff as well for what you wanna do and, and where it might be helpful to where you wanna go. Um, History book, nonfiction book outline templates. This one's a bit kind of iffy. Oh, so oh, oh, there it is. So that one's pretty interesting. So the introduction, what is the truth self? So you're gonna kind of introduce what you're working toward, why you're doing it. Um, chapter one, you're gonna have different approaches to how you can get the result that you want. Um, it just kind of goes through each piece and you can choose uh, like, and you don't have to say that chapter seven is putting it into action. You can even throw putting into action earlier and then what you learned from it and different things like that. So again, there are different templates online and they're all some of them are very helpful and none of them are set in stone. So don't think that that's totally 100% the way it has to be. If you find a different way to do it that works for you, absolutely go for it and do it. This is actually more of an up 
how you would specifically kind of more of a steps to doing it not an actual template of what to put in a self-help book but it it has some very uh actually very good uh ideas there in how the way things should be done um i would probably throw in some beta readers around here but actually before you format <laughs> but it kind of shows what steps you might take. So again, outlining I find is just a way to organize your thoughts and make it so that you can figure out where you want your book to go and how you want it to, uh, to work. Tracy, you had something that you wanted to say? I'm wondering if maybe that little, uh template thing there is for somebody who's going to do not self-publish? Uh, well, depending, that, that, yeah, that template there is more of, um, it's kind of a step-by-step -step of how to publish a book. It's not really how to, a template for, for an actual, you know, content to put into the book. So that one wasn't very, very useful I didn't think um but you know depending like if, if you're a novice at this and you really don't know what steps uh, or order um book writing goes in it might be helpful to you like let's you know you get your idea you research your idea um you look into um uh, expert opinions things like that and then you go forward into the actual writing mode um, you get feedback on your writing, you um, re, you re, uh, you do like a second or a third draft and then you bring it to editors and then you rewrite it again into your final draft and then you go forward and either, depending if you're um, self-publishing, you would bring it forward to self-publish and you go on Amazon, you would format and upload your own manuscript. Or if you're going to go to, um, traditional publishing route, you'd have to make query letters and send those out, possibly get an agent um, and try to work that route and see where it goes. Um, I find I'm, I'm self-published, so I enjoy the entrepreneurshipness of self-publishing because basically I'm running a business. I have to be in charge of my product. I have to be in charge of my marketing. I have to be in charge of how it looks, how it gets to the customer, um, my own deadlines, things like that. So it's it's a different process um, than traditional publishing. But they each kind of have their own steps in how you would do it. Because I would probably start advertising um, along the point where I was working on the final draft because I would want to garner interest for it and get those pre-sales. Um, when it comes to traditional publishing, they would have more determination of when that would be. You don't have the determination of when that is. You give up some control over certain things, but you also get the financial backing of a publisher and you're not um, putting in the money to advertise. You're not putting the money in for the cover designs. They're doing that because they're making that investment. So, uh, did anybody else have any other questions? No? Because I'm kind of talked out about outlines because this is the first time I've ever used one. So I'm finding it useful. Um, normally I'm a pantser but I am finding it very useful. Um, let's go back to our full screen. There we are. Yeah, I'm finding it. Okay, Tracy, what? <laughs> Is there certain programs that would help you make these outlines better? Or would you just use like simple programs or? I like Excel. Um, yeah. it's, it's simple, easy to use. I enjoy using it. 
I think that it, it basically does what's needed. It's an easy program, comes with all your other Microsoft stuff. You know, you get your different tabs on the bottom. You can color code it. You can uh, not color code it. You can choose your own how you want stuff. I'm sure that other people use other programs, um, but I do, I, I'm sure there are other spreadsheets or other other programs. But again, I just I find if it's free and it's simple, use it. <laughs> oh, unmuted by host. Hello. Yeah, I, can, I can unmute you. There you go. Hi, Elaine. <laughs> Did you have Hi. any questions about uh, book writing or any or publishing or anything like that? Hmm. I found this very interesting. I had no idea that you could find this much on Google. Oh, um, Google's I didn't know. Tool. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't know that was out there. Um, I guess that will give me something to look into because I'd never considered it before. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Oh yeah, it's it's a really because a lot of authors have gone before us. And a lot of them have been very helpful and they have made their own sheets and you know some of them have blogs and so if you if you have a writer that you enjoy and that's in the kind of genre that you want to write go look for them or look for similar writers and see if they have blogs because sometimes they'll share stuff about their writing process that is invaluable which you can kind of um, emulate and put into your own process Okay. Is there a point that's better to do your outline, like earlier, later, or just whenever you realize you're actually going to write it? Or um, well, you can do it whenever you want. Like I said, I'm I'm usually a pantser, so usually what I'll end up doing, um, what I did with the my uh, romance books and with my other um, my self help book, which I know. <laughs> what I did with them was basically I kind of winged it and then I would make little notes of where I needed to fill in the gaps. So I'd be like, I have to write a scene about, you know, this so that I can connect my scenes together so I can get them to the end. Um, so that kind of little list step I did part way through, I, I would be like a third to two thirds of the way through for this time. I actually, I started writing my opening scene and then I went, okay, I need to keep track of this because it's going to be a bit more difficult because I need to know exactly what's going on when so that I'm not confusing my readers so that um, I'm not changing up my facts or, you know, switching anything because I've had readers calling me out on switching my facts before I, I accidentally from book one to two, I switched somebody's middle name in my in my uh romance series my clean romance and i had a reader call me out on it and i'm like did i really do that and i went back and i checked and sure enough i had so i had to fix it and re-upload it uh to amazon and you know thank you for the reader because obviously other people would have picked it up and just went oh seriously she doesn't know what she's talking about she can't even keep a name straight but you know to me it was a middle name it wasn't that important i just ran forward um, but for a cozy mystery, a middle name can be the difference between them being the killer or not, right? So it's, it's a more of a details game and I need to have that. Now with, with my romance set, I do have a who's who list. And that basically says all my characters, who's related to who, all their names, including the middle ones, what, you know, their goals are or where they work and just a quick quick little description of each that way i have that for reference later on going oh wait a minute what happened there and i could check my who's who's list rather than jumping into a book to reread something because i'm on book nine nine of that series so after a while it can get confusing um now for the cozy mystery like i said it i started that right at the beginning and i have that first I have my set of characters, which will continue to expand and, you know, I'll mark them off as I kill them or mark them off as I, I, you know, they leave. And then I have 
um, a tab for, I'm going to have a tab for each book, basically stating the characters, their motives, what the conflicts are, um, my, my um, scene sequence, and then some interesting tidbits on the side. And I'm going to also have to put in what recipes I did use and what recipes I did not use. <laughs> Um, because I'm throwing that in too, because a lot of cozy mysteries, excuse me, involve recipes. So I have taken that into account and I will be throwing those in too, so that I'm fitting my target market and their expectations. Because if they're expecting, um, you know, within the first two chapters to find the body, um, to have a conflict in the first chapter, to have a conflict in the fifth chapter, and to get resolved at the end but they also are expecting to have recipes in there and maybe a pet or two i have to meet those expectations of those readers so that they are happy with the end product and that they continue to want to buy more so my outlines are just going to help me keep track of those details and hopefully i will like them <laughs> because i think that's going to be key with this little cozy mystery series that i'm putting together um, and like, like I said, for outlines, you can use them for any, any um, thing that you're writing whatsoever. It doesn't have to be fiction. It can be nonfiction. It could be a sports book. It could be a cookbook. It could be whatever you want. Just, just will help you lay out what you, your goals are with your book. Tracy, you're on mute again, so you're going to have to unmute. I have two questions. Okay. Question number one. Would you have separate outlines for your plot and then for your characters information um i kind of do i guess it, it would depend what you want um if i go share my screen a second we'll start with some more murder uh where are you right here share so this is my character list i've got all different names i've got again their description history what they love what their motives are for doing certain things and then this one, like I said, is my S'more Murder, which is the first book. And I put the characters from that book because, because I am, not all characters will be, be in each book. So you're going to have crossovers where they come back and where they leave and, you know, so forth. This is just to help me keep track of the main, main group that is going to be there. So again, what their motives are for the crime, the main conflicts, um, and how they relate to that. So who killed Ethel? Um, who has gaming debts? Who's been disinherited? Um, why is she dead? Uh, and your details, and then your next conflicts in there. So I've kind of kept it separate in color coding, but I've kept it on the same page, if that answers your question. Yes. Okay, and your next question? Um, if let's say you've written parts of it already, let's say you're either writing a blog or you're writing, you know, part of the story just kind of wrote, you wrote it out. Yeah. Cause would you the inspiration include, comes. Yeah. Would you include in your outline saying, okay, I already wrote, wrote this section pages, whatever to whatever, or I've already written the section blog date, blah, blah, blah. That could be very helpful. Um, especially if you're using an electronic a copy because then you can color code it you can put the link to it you can write down you know just little detail to the side so that you know exactly what it's about it covered this it covered that you know like you could you can use your highlighter in the um so if we go to share the screen a second so if you have your excel sheet like i do and you see these colors here like you have the yellow or you have a highlighter, you can highlight your colors and say, okay, this is done. And you can put a separate little area and say, okay, it's, it's written, right? So, and then you can put your link in, it's, you know, a check mark so that you know it was written. You can put the author, if you have multiple authors so that, you know, everybody gets accredited. So it is kind of nice that way to be able to choose and to be able to add that on so that later on, you know, yes, this is done. It's checkmarked off the list and I can just find it here and grab it and paste it, you know, copy paste it over to into my actual book. So yeah, that that's a great idea actually, yes. <laughs> um, 
I don't know, I get, I get excited over writing. It's, it's a lot of fun. And I find that I've been away from writing for a long time, which is unfortunate. I was doing school for like a oh, long time. And I was doing a lot of eight hour essays. Thank you. Thank you to my one instructor so much. <laughs> I did a lot of essays for him. Um, and I think, I think a lot of people hesitate over writing because they feel that a their work isn't good enough or they're a very strong critic of their own work or they feel like they've never done it before so they're very inexperienced hi Elaine you know and so the one thing that advice is universal is the only way to become a writer is to start writing and to keep writing because that's the only way to improve what you're doing and even if you feel the first draft is trash it's okay because the trash can is your friend. That's what Margaret Atwood says. <laughs> She's like, God invented the trash can just for writers. Um, and, and you just have to get started and you, you enjoy doing the process after a while, then you will find out that you are indeed a writer. And it's, it's all about working through what you're doing and expressing yourself. It's an, it's an art form in itself. And I kind of missed it especially for fiction, because that's what I enjoy. But even with doing the nonfiction, I did a lot of essays. There is a satisfaction in doing an essay well and in doing your work well and knowing that it is out there and fully able for somebody to just come along, read it and understand it from start to finish, which is great. Oh, she's got something. You think it helps with the uh, writer's block? If you have an outline, I think it does. And the fear of like not finishing or not fear of, you know, being too much or the overwhelm. I, th I think it really does help with writer's block because writing an outline is a form of writing. So it kind of gets you started. Even if, if you're not like taking off and writing a scene, it's still giving you a starting point and it's pushing you to write something. And so once you're in the flow of writing something and your ideas are starting to be cohesive of where you want to go, you start getting excited to write those scenes, to gather that information, to make it complete. So I think it's very therapeutic um, for a writer's block, which is something that I hadn't really thought about before. No, I, I'm, like I said, this is the first time I'm doing an outline. I'm, I'm finding it very useful. And I hope that I continue to find it useful because I I can see exactly where everything is going and how it's going to fit together and what the, the main pieces of, and elements are, which is very helpful and I don't have to wonder about it. And obviously there's gonna be subplots and little twists and turns and things that will catch me by surprise as always, because that's how I write. Like I said, I'm a panther. I don't always know what my characters are going to do. I throw them in the water and I see how they react. That's, that's how, I, how I write. Um, but when, if, if I was doing like say um, an art history book or something like that, the, the creative flair would be more in how you're introducing your people in the language that you use, um, maybe their background history of each person. You'd be researching, gathering the information, gathering the images, and you would start um, with outlining like, why did you choose to write the book? Why is it necessary? And then you would go into the history. You might chop it up into different uh, types of art movements. You might chop it up into different um, ages, like um, uh, dates, like certain periods of time. Or you might even chop it up into, let's say, materials that they used to create that art. So you can kind of switch up how you want to um, put it together. And with an outline, you can create two or three outlines for the same book. And then you can see the pros and cons of how each would go and go, okay, this one I would find the most interesting. And that would be the outline that you would pick to kind of emulate your book after. And like I said, an outline is not set in stone whatsoever. So if you need to switch something, by all means, you're the author, go and do it. Um, and then at the end of all of your information, you'd have your conclusion and maybe a dedication to somebody who helped you with your, your you know, research and whatnot, slap a pretty cover on it and throw it out there for sale, <laughs> you know? And, and it kind of goes, 
And that, that can be an intimidating step too, that, oh my goodness, I've edited it. I've gotten it as good as I can. People are saying it's good, but is it really? Do I hit the sale button or do I hide and pretend it never happened? And a lot of people get to that, that sort of stage. And the truth is that we're all just people. Stephen King is just a person. You know, Margaret Atwood, she's just a person. She's hilarious. If, if you ever watch the commercials on Facebook for master classes, hilarious. But everybody, we're all just people. We all have our different, um, our different talents, our different abilities. Some people are meant to be writers. Some people long to be writers, but won't do it because they're self-conscious. So if you're self-conscious about it, just get feedback. Get feedback and improve and work on it. And at some point say, it still has mistakes in it, but it's good enough. And send it out to the masses because it will never be perfect. Nobody's writing is perfect. And once you realize that, because there are authors out there who are big name authors who would love to take some back some of their works and rewrite it again. But, you know, you, you can't do that till the end of time. It's, it's got to be published at some point. It's just finding that sweet spot where you're, where you're comfortable enough to let it go. <laughs> or you're given no choice. Or you're given no choice, you know because deadlines are deadlines, right? <laughs> if you set yourself a deadline and say it has to go by then, that, that can be something too. And sometimes deadlines are very useful because you can make many goals to get up to your deadline and you can kind of plot out how you're gonna spend your time and what you're gonna do. And sometimes deadlines are not useful at all because people feel too much pressure and they never get it done. So it depends what type of person that you are and what you need to motivate you to work on your writing. Mm -hmm. As you take your sip, I'm going to take a spot. Um, <laughs> could you use your uh, outline to plot your course or as like a to-do list as well? It kind of is a to-do list. It really is because, um, because I, I've created a scene list of scenes that have to be included in the book. And there'll be little scenes in between that I haven't written on there, but these are the main things in the book that have to happen in order to get from point A to point B to point C to the end. And so by creating that to-do list, I can write a scene independently, or I can just start at the top and work my way down. And like you said, every time you get something done, even if it's a rough draft, you can give it a color. So let's say rough draft, I'll give it yellow. And then as I get done, the more yellow, and by the time I'm done, my entire thing should be yellow. Now, if I go back and I rewrite it, or if I do some editing to it, or let's say something wasn't quite working, I might give it, um, if something's not working, I might put it in red and say, okay, I know it's not working, but I can't think of what's going on, so I'll revisit it later, and this is my reminder to revisit it later to make sure that it works and it flows. And then I might give it a green light after the third draft and be like, it's finished, it's polished, it's ready to go, I don't have to visit that scene anymore. I can come back to the next piece and the next piece, right? And eventually the whole thing's green, and woohoo, I'm ready to format it and send it off. So color coding and having that option to create a to-do list for your scenes or just in general is is very helpful i think it might also be helpful if you're in collaboration or if you mm -hmm. have to do research and stuff like that and cite scenes cite your like where you found stuff there's um if you're in collaboration with other people on building a book um sometimes you're like if you, you can do it in a couple of different ways. Like if you're all building one book that you're going to have multiple authors on, or you can have a collaboration where each of you has a book in the series and it's going to be like a box set or something. So that's like an anthology type of idea. Um, any which way I would recommend having like Google docs or using Microsoft teams. Um, those are programs that are going to help you share your material with your group of people and nobody else. So you might um, 
upload and say, okay, this is our to-do list. And then each person can make changes to it and you can discuss it and create a master list and everybody can kind of check off what they're doing. You can create descriptions of things. You can create links to articles that you're researching. You can use it in multiple ways so that everybody knows that it's the central hub of information where you can, where everybody can get what they need out of the process and everybody can kind of comment on it. They can make changes to it. So you might say, okay, we're writing this book, all the three of us, we're writing this book and I've written the introduction, but I'm feeling that it's a little bit off. So I've uploaded my introduction to Microsoft Teams. Everybody has the password. Everybody knows how to get in and I want you guys to review it. So if you can review it in the next two weeks, make any changes you want on it or put little comments on the side. And so you guys would go in, you'd read it and say, oh yeah, this sentence here is not working. I don't know why. And the next person says, oh, I know why. Type, 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 type. And then we all come back to it and go, oh, that really works. Or I think we should switch this here until we all figure that it is as good as we can make it. And then you can go on with the next little piece of the story. Or people can work on their own little pieces in the meanwhile, and then you slowly bring it all together. So having that ability to do that with those programs with Microsoft Teams or Google Docs. <coughs> and, excuse me, and I'm sure there's other um, sharing software out there too. I just don't know the names of it off in my top of my head. But um, those two are basically free. And if it's free and it's easy to use, I'm all for it, as I've stated before. Um, and so, yeah, it, it would be helpful because then you would have that checklist of things to do. You would have the ability to share the information. You have the ability, everybody has the ability to change the information and make it better, which is helpful. And it's easier if you're not all in the same office since everybody's working yeah, yeah. from home or a lot of people are working from home now. It, you know, that's a helpful tool for oh. a lot of different ways of writing or collaborating or just Well, here's, here's the thing too. Even if before we're all working at home, it could be that you're in Seattle and you're in Germany. We've got different time zones, you know? It, it, just, it just makes it a way that anybody can work on it during the time that they have. Somebody might only have two hours here or three hours there. Somebody else might have 20 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the afternoon, an hour at night. So you can kind of all get the work in and get it done, but you can do it in your own time. And I found that very useful for a lot of our college projects. Which, and I think if you've got different groups going on because you're doing different projects, because mm -hmm. writers do quite often have simultaneous yes. things going on, then you have that group, all that mm -hmm. information there. So you're not searching through 100 emails or, you know, if you have two or three people that are work with you all the time, but you've got different projects going on, you could, I think, is there heading sections there that you can do? Projects, well, you, can, whatever, you can put it in, you can put different projects, like you can upload different documents and keep them separate. Um, there's also like a chat area. So if you just want to discuss something, you can chat about it. There's like, there's a video conferencing area. So you can just like Zoom each other type of idea, FaceTime each other. Um, and so you, you have different opportunities with it. And I found we used it for college quite a bit because people were on different schedules. And, you know, some people worked a second job with it. Some people were able to do certain times and other people couldn't do other times. And you could even set up uh, specific meetings and things like that. And what I did was I ended up writing down our minutes for our meetings. So whoever didn't attend that time, because we usually had one person who couldn't attend and it would rotate who it was, depending what date we picked for our meeting, because we tried to make it fair. And then what I would do is I would write down the minutes from our meeting in point form so they would know what happened. And if they had any questions, they would just tell, you know, ask and we could let them know. And that way everybody was apprised of the situation and kept, kept on top of it. And that works for work projects and it works for if you're writing a book together, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, a memoir, whatever, right? Sports drama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it gives, gives those opportunities. Mm -hmm. It's just, I think it's a nice option for some of the outlines and stuff like that too. You can print it off and then highlight mm -hmm. your section of what you're working on. If you don't always have a computer with you or you just want to kind of, you know, that, that blue light time in the evenings where you're not supposed to have that. So you can just print it off and then start 
outlining or working filling in blanks because sometimes pen to paper feels really good to write yeah sometimes clicking away, you really, it feels really good to write um like it, it's it's just knowing what programs are available and i think something too like you said pen to paper some people prefer that and then they type it up later some people like they have like programs where you can scan your penmanship and then it turns into text so depending how good you are with a pen it might work um but they also have uh, i've seen it's like you know how you have your tablet they have like a pen for your tablet a program that way and you can just write it and it will convert it to text so it's it's like a, a style pen and it electronically converts it, but you can still do your do your writing that way because some people are, are really, you know, they prefer that. Some people prefer to dictate what they write. So they use programs like Dragon. Um, I've never personally used it. I've tried different programs for dictation, the free ones, because again, me, free. If, if it works and it's free, try to use it. Uh, I haven't found that any of the free ones overly work really well. But then again, I, you have to have patience with it and take the time to let the program learn your voice and learn how you speak because different people talk differently. And if, you know, some people will just, just have an easy way of doing it and it will work really well with them. Some people are going to have difficulty with it. So that pen to uh, iPad or tablet. tablet thing. Does it? Do you know if it has any settings that way you can have like a black screen and just write with white so that it, it doesn't, you know, hurt, when you're... hurt your eyes? I have no idea. I have no idea. That'd be something to Google. Google. Yeah. 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 Like just to Google it and see see what it does and doesn't do. Because I have, like I said, I don't know much about it, but I've seen that advertised somewhere, and I just kind of went, oh, that's nifty. I don't really need to do it because I'm a faster typer than I am a writer. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for some people, if they've been doing pen and paper for a long time, like, you know, Geraldine, she's a pen and paper type of person. So that might work for her. For me, having it on paper in front of me when I'm doing outlines and or, you know, filling in blanks or, you know, like I can make a chart or something and fill in the mm -hmm. blank sort of thing. Whereas sometimes it's, you know, putting in the computer and then I'm like, it's lost in my computer land. I don't find that. Where, <laughs> how do I store it under? You know, I mean, my papers, yeah, they're, 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 they can be scattered too, but at least I can shuffle through and say, oh yeah, that was my last week. Where they kind of are. <laughs> <laughs> like, everybody has different uh, what works for them and what doesn't work for them. So you got to find what works for you the best. And that's what you're going to do. You know, if, if you want to try something new, try it but you know trusted and true that's that's what works so um and also with the outlines don't be afraid to steal from different outlines and cobble together your own so if if you're finding something works here something works there something works over here make your own outline just cobble it together make it work for you for your purpose because again it's just an outline it that part will never get published Nobody cares. <laughs> so it's for your purpose only. So make it work for you. All right, ladies, yeah. if we have no other questions, I think we'll end it on that note just because it's eight o'clock and I'm sure everybody has something that they would love to be doing right now. So had a great time. Thank you for coming to Authors Helping Authors. If you can think of any questions or so, you can always follow up and uh, let me know. And I'll be here next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to answer any questions and talk about a new subject. So talk to you later. Take care.